One of the most critical things we do in our production season that's often the most overlooked is tapping our trees. Sometimes producers will get high school kids to come out and help because they're young, the legs work good, they don't mind being on snowshoes too much, and they can get the job done really quick. But when you follow them around, you find that, gee, last year's tap hole is here, this three years there, it's not so good. So tapping practice is really, really essential. If you tap here this year, you want to be directly opposite of it next year. So 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, up and down the tree, you want to get as far away from previous injuries as we can. Drop line length, they've got to be long enough so that we can reach the entire circumference of the tree. And uh, those things are really critical. Look for other defects in the tree. Uh, any cankers, knots, cracks, any issues that are there, look carefully at the tree from the where it penetrates the ground right through to the upper canopy. Is there anything going on there? Um, oftentimes, you can't see where it penetrates the ground at tapping time, but you need to be thoughtful of what's going on there. Uh, a nice, clean, sharp hole. <laughs> so this tapping bit might seem silly, but having the right bit is essential to making the best hole. This year, our strongest sap runs were after the 20th of April. There are two things that made that possible. One was every spout in our woods was new as we tapped our trees. Secondly, we drilled a nice, clean, sharp hole with the right bit. This bit is very expensive. You're going to look at it and say, Jesus, that's a lot of money. Uh, I can go to the hardware store, get the same diameter drill for a tenth of that price, but it won't drill the same hole that this does. A lot of research has gone into this drill bit, and uh, we had very good results with it. How many you get out of a drill bit like that? That's really interesting. We've always used the titanium nitride bits previous and I looked at that and I said that's not going to last. But this drill, we were getting three and four thousand holes per drill bit. And, uh, and we were changing, I don't know that we had to change them at that time, but I didn't want to push it any further. They're still drilling a nice clean hole, but you know we were getting some wear, so uh, we did change it. I, th I thought you started here it is a drill. It, it takes more power to drill yeah. because it's getting rounded just a little bit. Yes. If you're really observant, you'll pick that up. But to be honest, it happens so gradually that it's a steady progression down. It's not like you chainsaw. You know, you're cutting along, everything's wonderful, and then you stick it in the dirt, and the next thing it just won't cut at all. And so you get on and ride, and still doesn't cut. Pounding a spout into a tree. We've all got hammers of various sizes and shapes. It seems silly to buy a special hammer to pound spouts in a tree, but this is just the right tool for that job. I smiled at it a little bit too, but the soft face, nice big flat face on it, you can hit these polycarbonate spouts and drive them squarely into the tree. It's light, so you're likely not to overhit, and uh, it's totally weather resistant. Uh, nice loop in the handle so you can put a uh, lash around your wrist so that you don't drop it. You can have hands free to work on things and not lose the hammer. Uh, so, seems silly, but this is a, a really good uh, tool to use rather than the old carpenter's hammer or anything else that you might find that's got a rounded face you drive the spout squarely into the tree, and how you swing it, it's not like driving spikes. I do it just with my fingers. No wrist movement at all, just with your fingers. Tap the spout into the tree. Seat it firmly, but don't split the bar.
to split the bracket. It's bad, bad, bad. That spout will leak the whole season and it will kill a big section of the tree. So that, the right bit, the right job. Drilling two inches deep into the tree is what we do. Some people go deeper, some people go shallower, but I found that two inches is pretty optimum for tree health and sap collection. Any questions or thoughts so far? Actually running the drill itself. Some of you old buggers remember if you watch TV at all, there used to be a show on called Gunsmoke. And that was where Marshall Dillon saved the West. Marshall Dillon with his revolver at 100 yards could pick the right eye out of a sparrow. Uh, yeah, in flight. And with no sighting at all, just bang, he's dead. Well, nobody can really do that. If you really watch a marksman shoot a handgun, it's always like this, not like that. So drilling a tree, we don't just step up to a tree and drill it. I like to get my elbow against the tree, tripod myself, and drill like this so that I'm straight in, straight out, no wobble, no up and down, just like a mini drill press put on the side of the tree so you drill straight in and straight out. Anybody that's a carpenter or furniture maker, you know that if you're drilling dowels to put a tabletop together, you don't just offhand it. You really lock in and drill straight down and straight out. So the other last essential, spinning the drill at the right RPM. Um, most cordless drills on 5 sixteenths bits. If it's a three speed drill, we want to run on the center speed. If it's a quarter inch drill, we want to run on high speed. If it's a two speed drill, top speed. We want to be spinning somewhere in the 2000 RPM range. And the drill should be wide open as you start and don't let off on it until you out. Any change in RPM torques a bit. And so a lot of guys, you know, they run a chainsaw, their finger has to be moving all the time. You ever seen somebody like that? <laughs> drill, same thing, the finger's got to be moving all the time. As you do that, the drill goes like this. It's always torquing. So same RPM, in, out, stop. Any other thoughts about that? Yeah. About that time your snow from slips, right? Exactly. <laughs> You've got your arm against the tree, it's the best opportunity you've got to save the bit. Snowshoe slips and you're like this, you know you're going to break it. But rest it against the tree, pretty good chance you'll save that bit. <laughs>